はい。So today we're going to talk about something where really the only audience for this particular video might be the gay community. The gay community that's very experienced within gay meccas, social enclaves, things like the Castro, Boys Town, WeHo, West Hollywood, Hillcrest District, things like that, Tower District, whatever. The reason why I say experienced or seasoned is because the topic is going to really bring in energy that is going to postmark an era where maybe you have had problems in the gay community because of betrayal and because perhaps um, things did not go your way as a result of money or uh, emotional challenges or just domestic violence. Everything that straight communities and heterosexual marriages have is what gay marriages have. There's no difference. So we're going to touch on some topics that are very close to the heart of the gay man. A statement that I have heard in the gay community is ditch the bitch and make the switch. So immediately there's derogatory backstory and no man really has been held accountable by a gay culture and said, you know, men, you can't treat women like this. You need to go back and basically make your amends. And the more and more certain men get away with their spiritual criminality, what have you, and there's no real emotional or earth justice. And people they've been with have had AIDS or people they've been with have overdosed and or been in a life of homelessness. So when the gay man who's experienced can say he likes rough trade, raunch, uh, things like this, and then there's betrayal between two men that have shared very intimately water sports, let's say, it's a lot of suffering that happens and a lot of dehumanization. Today's topic is dehumanization. We can say that it's a dark topic, of course, it might not be a safe global gay community. Nevertheless, there's always light. There's always light. And we're going to come out with some ideas that are going to help you understand more of what we're discussing. Some of the things that can hurt the gay man are this, as follows. One moment, please. Let's say there was a man that had a certain factuation or had studied extensively certain maybe pioneers in the gay community, such as Harvey Milk. He worked as a public administrator in San Francisco and was assassinated for being gay. So let's say a man was on a date, a man that has overcome obstacles, such as drug abuse, and says, one of my heroes is Harvey Milk. So the next date, the person came over, and you know the thing that says Milk, the other person. So now we have, you know, connection, and cuts out a little Harvey and says, here you go. And here's a picture for Harvey your hero, and I'm glad to date you. That happened to a man. And then after the relationship, the other man who had gifted the man with this had broken up with the man and said, you know, you're not worth it. No bang for my buck, no juice for my squeeze. So things that maybe the person had written to the person would be, Tyler, I love you things like that. Or made a little little diagram to show you how sweet one is. My lover boy, you did not have to ask me 
if you had thoughts of maybe doing something because whatever. So that's all and people think they're superior in their action and that is the way that they promote themselves to be the stabilizing force in environments. They use lies and they get the rocks off on popping people's balloons and maybe you know after saying here's a uh, thing for you as your role model is Harvey Milk you know but yet I'm gonna break up with you it's like I love you I love you and tell me you love me and I'm gonna give you syphilis so there's this double standard and pig-headedness and hypocrisy and just being a joker and when you have a pig-headedness, a two-facedness, but you've helped somebody out, it shows up as patronizing. And it's not always kindness and care and consideration. And in Anthroposophy, Rudolf Steiner, he talks about considering other people's thoughts, even if they seem minute. As you can see in the last several videos, I've worn some sleazy clothes because I wanted to say, as we judge ourselves on YouTube for maybe being fit or not, that we don't always understand sacrifice in the level of public service. And so sacrifice is saying, I'm letting you in on these YouTube videos to show you the ups and downs that I have, but there's returns. and there's no, uh, there's no flaw to imperfection, but there's flaw to perfection. And that's been some of the teachings that I've had. <laughs> so, however men and men will betray one another, that will probably be up to your own sweet destiny. And I believe in suggestive destiny. And so when you love in vanity and you know that about yourself and you come to terms with saying, you know, this man is an amazing man. Why does he lie to me? You have to go right into the research laboratory of why you say you're so self-important as a man and what you bring other men as far as the mental capacity and to be willing to be known in the midst of men's confused social alchemy. And so I've gone between transgender, being female and being male. And I wanted to put that out there in my psychological masculinity because that can be very humanized, dehumanized, pardon me. And because of the betrayal and the cheating culture. When somebody betrays you and maybe your psychological masculinity or something, and it justifies hurting them back, you already have a problem. You have not been a loving person in the relationship, and that's something that hurts another person. When you empower yourself, you also have to surrender your own vain thinking to mark it up. So sharing sleazy clothes or sharing a role model and telling you I've been rejected because of uh, manic depression, you can see that real men of rough trade wouldn't be dehumanizing me because they have nothing to lose. Real men that are rough trade I'm talking about, that are in the streets. So this points us into a very direction as the collective gay male soul. How do we address the scandal of homelessness, saying that homelessness is okay when there's diseases? How at the heart do you get reattached to the right things? Because it doesn't mean you've always been in the wrong. You can love rightly and you can love greatly. And you can visit your own knowledge base whenever you want. And you can create a theory. I have one friend from Sri Lanka and she says is CSS, constant scowl syndrome, when people just have scowls on their face all the time. You have to carve out a place with yourself and see that the intellectual and scholarly pursuits to organize a civilization pertains to the central earning energy center 
and cultivation of the harmonious development of mankind. That's a very important point. So do you have insufficient funds? Do you need to cleanse your mind? Do you need to have people invest in you because you're broke? You have to let them know that they can't dehumanize you and call you airhead, fool, whore, just because you are relying on their money for help. That's a very important thing that you have to uh, acknowledge too. There was something over here I was going to get, but I forgot. So, question. What are you looking for? And how are you selling yourself? By what comes out of your mouth and by what your eyes see and how you speak from your mouth, your heart, in the homelessness that kills a lot of people. How do you decipher and talk about that? You know, the philosopher has always asked Plato Aristotle, why does man exist? For, for what purpose? It's to visit the knowledge base and to find some type of theoretical framework on how your alchemy can work how you can change and how you can benefit from telling people that you need them to help you because maybe you feel dehumanized. When you do that and you go around kissing ass, because that's basically what you're telling yourself by accepting what I just said, there is this paw that you have to pertain to. You have to be very sensitive like a cat and make a very positive impact when you do that by your energy and by your aura. And you do that by gaining a spiritual practice and going through some of the work of Social Alchemy Project, Access Management. So everything is Tyler Hamilton? No, everything is legendary Tyler Hamilton and is legendary you. And in Social Alchemy Project, Access Management, it makes it a win-win situation where there's no exclusionary purposes to exclude you or to dismiss to dismiss you. I couldn't interest, I can barely speak. Oh, because maybe you're an airhead. Social Alchemy Project has to jump to destiny. And that is you are love. So Social Alchemy Project Access Management, in this talk of humanization and humanizing things, not dehumanizing things, we take the plethora of each man's experience and ask him to begin to take an introspective look, honest inquiry of why he feels that he is self-important. Yet, he allows himself to, de to be dehumanized if it's by manipulation he can do that and get to where he needs to be or wants to be. He still has a chance to pursue and create whatever out there that relates to art. But has he successfully done that? where it's made profit and it's made a living. So that will show us a feeling and an eagerness to be faithful to the collective, the fathers, the sons, the humane life sustainability of family, social justice, global networking through technology. We don't have to catastrophize everything, but we can say that by chance there's freedom and we put our money where our hearts are telling us to put our money. Nothing ever works good enough for people, right? People want perfection. They are critical. And they will dehumanize if you show them something they resent in themselves. And you're showing it within yourself. So you want people to need a business person and to be able to talk to you and not disrespect you for whatever they think is not everything legendary, blank, 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 your first, third, or second name. That's really beautiful. That is really beautiful. But not
Isn't that the truth? People catastrophize things because they've been dehumanized and they see the dark and the shadow and the gloomy and they need to rise and see the light in themselves and not only pertain themselves to the light when it suits them, but to benefit for the light for other people and to put an end to the facade and the charade and not let the pain of seeing yourself sting you anymore. So were you good enough and true to the world when the world put you down? Do you hope that the world will not grow lonely like you because you have pride and you have your narcissism? So are we dumpy and are we bums and do our minds go to the streets and as we've hit rock bottom? So are you man enough to provide for yourself when you have been maybe an asshole due to the troubles of life? Are you not capable to share your time with the world and to be willing to be known and get past your stinginess of your time and share your time with the world? Or do we hide from dishonesty and meander in our minds late at night in the dark space when we can't go to sleep and we end up promoting dishonesty because of our vanity and our pride? So we're creeps and we're slimes. And we got to get out of the wheelies and the rocks that are dumping on men. And we have to shuffle through the rocks and not see it as exclusivity when we have aha moments, like Oprah would say, or we have epiphanies. And we don't work as hypocrisy and we don't hide and we're not silent about the good anthropological things that we have found as we've left our, psycho our psychopath behaviorism or our mental illnesses. So people can turn out to be a liar and be dishonestly a liar and a fake. But we have all been abused by time bombs and we have turned into bastards by growing in hostility against people because they don't take us to where the party is or to where we can take vacations and we can live it up. So we have to say we should not be pricks and we could look at saving ourselves by not dehumanizing ourselves and telling ourselves that we are junk. Don't tell ourselves that we are junk. You are a healer you are an intellectual, and you are a scholar. You are the stabilizing force after being used, robbed, and lied to. You can be a speaker, you can be your author, you can be your strategist, you can be your teacher, you can be your consultant. You can have your website for consulting, for courses, for your speaking engagements, for your praises and what people have said about you. You can have a vlog, you can have your contact, and all about you link. All that stuff brings you to reconciling yourself and to one another. Those differences are the things that bring you together because you're not separatists. You don't have to wrestle against one another because the giant does not really exist. The giant was only made up in folklore. Suffering of pain and anguish is because we hold on to things that we should not hold on to. We fashion a political positive integrating ourselves because we are reimbursing ourselves for all the harm and we can make a lot of money and we can take vacations and put all of our pictures on Facebook and be very high schoolish. We can work out ourselves and work ourselves like a clock. We can lie to ourselves, and we have to give ourselves a plead bargain. Say to yourself, I did all I can to afloat my life and to love myself as my best affair to myself, and I will probably be lonely. I am going to stop at that. And I'm going to just let you know that you are free 
to have your own awareness workshops with Social Alchemy Projects, please contact us. There's going to be products coming along. There's going to be miscellany, ebooks, DVDs. There's going to be music CDs, event shows featured. And there's going to be a spiritual and educated consciousness conferences, awakening of these free awareness workshops where we can tell you more about our Hamilton legacy or legendary products. And you can't provide yourself enough because you think you have to do it alone because you've been hurt and dehumanized and defeated and invisible and misplaced and dismissed. And you have to just let it be and take photos of yourself and go ahead and have a light heart when you're working in the world so that in the awakening of the assimilated, as you activate your own empowerment, you're not going to be an asshole because you've established your part of sacred space. And this is laying dormant inside you. Patricia Coates, she says that there's a sacred space newly awakened within us and it's in our DNA and it's dormant strands of our DNA that put us into new solar strands of other people's auras and DNAs. So you have this whole metaphysical and that is also to be honored and respected in yourself. So we will continue more about what Social Alchemy Project Access Management is because it does relate also to the Tyler Hamilton University College of Social Behavioral Sciences and also some of the other playlists in the set uh, curriculum that's provided from out of new social science theories and ideas. God bless you and have fun humanizing everything that you have the power to humanize. And that is loving yourself right here, right now, for who and what you are. It's the truth, and it's good bullshitting, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get past all this rhetoric, really, and establish that social transformative change. I've been talking about this for two decades, and it's nauseating rhetoric, I understand. I love you. Dish, leave a dish. <laughs>